The Asian billionaire founders of DoorDash still deliver your food sometimes. Now, would it make the world a better place if all CEOs decided to do this more often? Yeah, this is going viral in the business world as well as the Asian internet world. We're talking about Stanley Tang, Andy Fang, Tony Shu, Andrew. These young Asian American guys are billionaires because they founded the DoorDash app and they still make deliveries every month to make sure they're in tune with the business and uh, this went viral. Yeah, I think it's great because, it, you know, for so long, so many businesses like CEOs are often very disconnected from their entry level employees and obviously delivering food. That is like, you know, not a job that a lot of CEOs would want to do. But I think it does give you perspective and it's also great for public image. But anyways, guys, the comment section is going crazy, partially because these are three Asian guys, children of immigrants. So we're going to get into the comment section. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Real quick, man, we got to get into some general general discussion talking points, Andrew. Some people were like, man, these Asian young CEOs, they got the right idea. They should do this. In fact, every company in America should do this. And even the politicians oh. basically saying that, you know, uh, I guess there's a sense in America right now, Andrew, that the top of the pyramid is becoming more and more disconnected from the bottom of the pyramid. So there's been this renewed interest. Like we said, the Starbucks CEO uh, is starting to do it. Uh -huh. and, and previously, it was just in shows like Undercover Boss, where it was like retail businesses. Right, right, right. You know, like uh, the, the, the Dairy Queen CEO serving Dairy Queen. But this is more like tech CEOs. Yeah, it does seem like for some reason in the tech world, things even are a little bit more separated. But I would say like Barack Obama, he has a series out on Netflix right now where he's trying to like go into like people's hardworking blue collar lives. You know what I mean? So anyways, this whole idea of the CEO being able to empathize with the like the earliest lowest level entry level employee, I think is something good. I'm not saying they got to work there forever, but they should do it sometimes. And uh, the other big part of the comment section, Andrew, of course, you know us, we got to get into the spicy part is uh, people are looking at Fang, Tang and Shu like, I don't really know if these are the new faces of uh, the American business elite. I don't know if I like what I'm seeing. Right, right. Because they are of all Chinese descent, right? CCP assets. Ah. All right, let's get into the comment section. Somebody said, that is what you are supposed to do as a business owner. You always got to do quality control, field audits. You know, I respect that to the core. That's why I'm choosing to invest in DoorDash because oh. it is a publicly traded company. Hey, well, see, hey, it's not only possibly good for business, but also good for the public image. Uh, but then this guy said one hour a month cannot possibly be enough time to see how bad DoorDash really is for drivers. Uh, no, I do think it's definitely better than nothing, right? No, and, and once a month, that's 12 times a year. I mean, think about it. You're still getting an update. I'm not saying that's a lot, but really, how many hours do you expect the CEO to spend? It, Maybe it, I could see, what, three hours a month? Yeah, who, who knows? Maybe they do it more. Obviously, we just know what is written in the article. Somebody said, I'd like to see Jeff Bezos load Amazon trucks for an hour each month, but he's too busy jetting, setting around the world in the atmosphere with his plastic surgeon's dream of a fiance. Yo, that's crazy, bro. Oh, it is true this. Let me, Andrew, let me tell you this. The Asian tech CEOs... They don't seem like to be living as high profile as like Elon and Bezos, though. Hey, has Mark Zuckerberg sold anything on Facebook Marketplace? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, uh, you know, some of the employees at DoorDash, Andrew, because they require everybody to do a certain amount per year, were complaining that this is not what they signed up for. Some of the guys who code, you know, the code for 300, 400, 500K a year, they didn't want to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think if they could make the argument it's like some type of security concern where they have to put their face out there and then they're going door to door. But other than that, I totally understand why a company would want all levels of employees to experience that at least a few times. Right. Even people who never thought they would know be the doing business. that. Because it's very easy, David. Like you said, like to walk into a Taco Bell, everybody's walked into a Taco Bell and ordered. So you understand that experience, but you don't know what it's like to be the, the cook. Right. You know, the person behind and the counter? And let's be honest, Andrew. Sometimes the C-suite level of a place like Taco Bell, it's not necessarily like my kids are eating Taco Bell every day. That's a good point. That's yeah. just where I'm a board member. Exactly. Somebody said, man, these guys need to do DoorDash at least four, at least four or five times a day to understand the kinks of it. And then they would realize how terrible the whole system is. <laughs> um, what do you think, Andrew? People doing DoorDash, and, and I could pull up 100 comments complaining about DoorDash, 
saying, yeah, I don't want to get any $2.25 orders with no tip. What the F? F DoorDash, but I'm still doing it every day. But I hate Tony Shoe, especially Tony Shoe. Apparently, there was a whole, like, Drivers versus Tony Shoe, which is one of the CEOs of uh, DoorDash, like, uh -huh. movement on the internet. Well, I, I guess the truth is, in the comments down below, anybody who uses DoorDash, the actual app, let us know if you think it works better than the other apps, like than Uber Eats or anything like that. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you let me know of what your thoughts. So that that means that this thing is working, this tactic is working, or maybe it's not. But how much personal responsibility do these uh, independent contractors have for just understanding that they're choosing to be a delivery person. Yeah, though. yeah. I mean, to be I, honest, I'm 50, it, no, 50. it's not, you know, it's not the most desired job, but sometimes you got to do it if you have some free time, right? Somebody said, uh, man, there's just too many fees not making it useful for the customer. The restaurants are mad because they're getting a cut uh, taken out of it and the delivery drivers are unpaid. This whole system is ruining everything. Plus, I don't trust the Chinese. <laughs> oh, you know what they should also do, David? They should open up a restaurant DoorDash needs to open up their own restaurant and then have that restaurant on DoorDash. So I'm saying they know what it's like to be the restaurant side. Oh, what would they serve? Right? Well, well, I, well I, Andrew, based off the ownership of DoorDash or the founding group, it'd have to be Chinese. Yeah, food. why don't they just start a Chinese restaurant and then they try to make it a business, but then they have DoorDash and then they'll see like how much DoorDash, the, the cut, like how much they take from each order and yeah. things like that. Uh, Andrew, and plus FTX just shut down as an exchange. Fang Tang Shu, they could call their DoorDash restaurant FTX now because the oh. name's available. Somebody said, Fang Tang and Shu, so great to hear an American success story. I roll. Um, Chinese CEOs have a habit of disappearing when the ish hits the fan. I would not be surprised if Tony Shu disappears soon. Somebody said, these guys are Chinese American citizens, guys. Come on, they are successful because they work harder than the whites. And someone said, yeah, these guys are working harder than the whites. All the whites nowadays are strung out on fentanyl and meth, blaming everything else, everyone else on their ill-gotten place in this world because they're losing their stolen spot that they had at the top. Oh, man. Yeah, and I'm telling you, these and, comment uh, sections. You know, you can't even have one single article without it getting political, huh? Somebody said, come on. Everybody knows that these rich Chinese had their CCP families finance their startup. I don't really count this. And then somebody said, I'm, I'm convinced that DoorDash is run by the Chinese military or U.S. government. Classic. Yo, that's Classic. crazy that he said Chinese military or U.S. government. Like, what a... What two choices that DoorDash must be run by? Wait, wouldn't those be two opposing sides? Yeah, but a conspiracy both ways, so though. So he's just saying, I don't know who runs it, whether it's the Chinese or the Americans, but it's ran by some type of larger conglomerate. I think in DoorDash's case, it's more likely the U.S. government than the Chinese military for sure. Ooh, so they knew that getting the ABCs that are second gen would cover it up because no one would ever believe that second gen ABCs would be affiliated with the CIA. Guys, I'll See, tell you- See, it's very meta. It's, there's a layer on a layer guys, on a layer. I can tell you this 100% that the Fung Bros channel, Hot Pop Boys, we are not sponsored or getting any funding from any government. <laughs> That's funny, man. Some of the comments you get. Um, somebody said, instead of writing a feel-good story on how a billionaire still does DoorDash, why don't we ask why he's a billionaire in the first place instead of paying his drivers more of what they earned because they're not getting paid enough for doing DoorDash? Mm. I mean, um, this almost goes to a whole capitalistic argument, right? Right. Like, why do the owners of companies get to make what, like, 100,000% more than their other workers, well, right? Well, what if, it, David, what if they switch spots? What if some drivers got to be put into the CEO seat and be given a bunch of tough decisions about profit and losses, and then that right. person has to decide? And then you do the little, like, play out the algorithm that, well, you know, I want to pay all my drivers five times as much, and then DoorDash profits go down. And well, you have, you have to, to shut more. the whole thing down, yeah, right? And then... And then so I don't know. Listen, I, mean, I think it's a lot weaker argument because these are the guys who originally founded that idea. Like DoorDash was one of the first movers in that entire space. So this, this whole industry wouldn't even be possible without the guys, even though, of course, I get it. It's 2023. People are mad about the, you know, uh, outcome splits. Somebody said, uh, what do all these Asian billionaires do to help the image of Asian Americans, specifically Asian American males out, huh? What do they do with all their money, Andrew? These guys are billionaires, and Asian guys are, you know, getting trashed in the media. 
What are they doing? Well, you know, actually, I, I know what they're trying to say is that, okay, these guys are kind of like, oh, they're Asian nerds. How are they helping out? How come they're not jacked? How come they're not buffed? They're not on some uh, testosterone, like, supplements. You're saying, like, how Bezos got eventually. Yeah, but I think the whole... You have to understand that there's so much more to life than just being like a buff Asian guy and trying to change that image because that's not really on them. Like, I think as a CEO of a billion dollar company, I think it's great if they get political, they have the money to back political candidates or to donate to things, to have charities, uh, to start organizations. Obviously, that's what they should be using some of their billions of dollars for. Right, Andrew, it's interesting. There was another comment saying, yeah, they should, just like all the Jewish billionaires, but there's just no unity and there's no like on being on the same page when you're Asian American. Mm. So basically somebody's saying, what will all these new rich Asian American founders decide to support, if anything, in the future? I think I'm starting to see some of them support things in media, things, the flashy stuff that seems to change people's minds. But you're right that it's not their number one priority. Yeah, I, it seems like Western billionaires, Andrew, remember when Paul Allen bought like the Portland Trails Blazers and the Seattle Seahawks? It seems like they are more like transitioning their money to these really like glamorous fields, even like uh, the, the, you know, the guy who bought the Clippers. Right. Somebody said, uh, in my personal experience working in fang jobs, most of these code monkeys and startup founders who are Asian or Indian often lack social awareness of such social issues. They tend to showcase the unattractive stereotypes as well. Man, it just really bothers me. Um, basically talking about, man, these guys are just nerds. They're not going to help the image of Asian men or raise us our status up in society. Man, uh, you know, your status as an Asian guy it's really like the, the, the person who can change it the most is you. Right. That's the truth. That's the truth of the matter. So you have to work uh, on yourself first. I just don't know if we're at the point yet where you're going to get somebody who is like a tech founder who's also a Chad, like I guess like Elon is or something like that. You know, like it's just not at that point yet. Um, but however, Andrew, there is a guy who uh, helped found Twitch called Justin Khan, and he is like kind of more like fitting that image of like a party guy. You know, he looks like he could be out at Marquee in Las Vegas. Yeah, he's, he's a little bit more lit. I guess, David, what's your major all uh, takeaway from all this? Like, should CEOs do this? Is this just for public optics? And is it partially because these are like children of immigrants and that's why they're doing this? And is this yeah. the right mindset? I do think children of immigrants, but I just think founders in general, because, Andrew, the people operating the company are the guys who originally started the company. Right. They didn't sell off all the equity so somebody else has been brought in. Mm. Uh, the founders are more likely to be gritty. I think second-generation immigrant kids are more likely to be gritty because oftentimes, whether or not our childhoods were ultra-gritty, we've seen it. We've seen times where you need to really get in the mud and get dirty, but that's true for any founder, but maybe a little bit less in the tech world. Um, I do think that more people should do it. Do you? Th I think politicians, they gotta be more living the reality because oftentimes they're so disconnected from the decisions that they're making. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody would always say like, oh, if politicians had to send one of their children to war, that there would be a lot less wars. Um, as far as the apps go, Andrew, people are saying that the apps are eating too much from the restaurant and the delivery drivers. So it's like everybody's getting shark bites out of them. What do you think of this? Will they ultimately figure this out? Or it just seems like these three sides of the coin are just going to be arguing with each other forever. Man, I have no idea, guys, but... Uh... You know, sometimes you just need delivery. So yeah. people are using uh, the apps. Generally, I'm optimistic. I think they will figure it out at some point. But some of it, you have to understand, it's like, man, th that's not going to be... Because a lot of people like delivering things for a living. But it's never going to be that well compensated. Right. It's that, true. That's uh, the honest truth. That's my it's honest true. take on it. I mean, anywhere in the world when you deliver stuff, I mean, all across Asia, they have a lot of delivery apps. You get paid even way, comparatively just, way less over there. Yeah. Um, Andrew, should these super rich Asian guys feel some responsibility to take their uh, liquidity, their net worth, and, and deploy it in a way that helps the overall Asian American image? Uh, I think to, to deploy your money um, successfully and effectively, you do have to be around the right people who are guiding you in the right places. Right. I do not think it is on every rich person's uh, uh, responsibility, but I think they should. They should feel a little bit. I mean, it'd be cool if they did, but ultimately, no, I don't think it is. Yeah. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Uh, shout out to the guys who started DoorDash. And until next time, we're the Hop Hop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.